Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this morning, a road rage incident on the north side leads to a person being shot. We'll have the latest details from SAPD. As states begin lifting restrictions, the administration is facing growing pressure to ramp up testing. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, boy, radar is lighting up. Some parts of our viewing area could be in for a Mother Nature surprise. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, April 29th. Thanks for being with us this morning. So, Mike, it looks pretty serious on the radar in some parts. It's really east of us and north of us. Right, north and east as of right now. And there's really nothing. Just a couple of our counties are under a severe thunderstorm watch. But uh, I want to show you what you're talking about with radar, first of all. Uh, but one thing, you step outside, it is hot. It is humid out there. That's all going to be changing later on. We'll get to that in a second. This is radar as of right now. Now, these have been producing some severe weather. There's a severe thunderstorm cell. Now, this is well east and northeast of our viewing area. And as you can see, all all of this is working its way down to the southeast. You go a little further to the north and that is not a pretty sight at all. And this line of showers and thunderstorms is you got to kind of step back and look at it is basically working its way to the east southeast. But uh, obviously Austin's going to be getting hit by that. Um, Unless that tail end decides to kind of fall apart, a lot of our uh, north and eastern counties may be hit by some of those stronger storms later on this morning. Obviously, these do have a history and are producing some severe weather as of right now. Large hail, uh, about ping pong ball size hail or even a little bit bigger than that and some very very strong winds are associated with the storms. Here's the outlook as far as the severe thunderstorm watch. It only includes San Marcos and then Gonzales counties, uh, Hayes and Gonzales counties. Otherwise, it's further to the northeast, uh, taking into account the the movement as of right now. A lot of computer models do keep this moving more to the southeast, kind of grazing our area. But uh, like I said, a little concerned about that big line of storms further up there to the north that it may be uh, kind of trending a little bit further to the west. So we'll obviously keep watching that throughout the rest of the morning. But if you are planning later on this morning to head up 35 or even out 10, you'd want to check ahead and maybe leave sooner than later or put it off to later on this afternoon. 76 here in town. I mean, temperatures are way out of whack. And again, you can really feel the humidity, but that's going to be changing by later on today because along these storms uh, or these storms are along a cool front which is moving on through here. It will knock temperatures down a little bit by uh, say 9 10 o'clock and then we'll come back up to 85 degrees. But the humidity is really going to be dropping out and it's going to be a windy day as well. How long this uh, nice weather sticks around? Look ahead at the first weekend of May coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike and folks taking a look at the roadways. You can see that uh, for now at least Things don't look too bad, but uh, hopefully we won't have to uh, deal with here in the, on the map there what you see on Mike's map. So let's take a look at Transguide. Currently, I-10 and Callahan, eastbound and westbound lanes, no issues. Moving over to 604 Calibre, you can see traffic in both directions on that outer loop running pretty good. No lines yet. Exiting for eastbound Highway 151 and 21 at Spruce Road Lane, north and southbound lane still running smoothly this morning. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police investigate a road rage incident that led to a shooting on the city's north side. It happened just after 9 p.m. in the 1700 block of La Monda, just east of I-10. Police say a 20-year-old passenger in a car was shot near North Star Mall by a person who they say got away in a gray vehicle. The driver drove the victim to their house to call for help, and that victim was then taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. SAPD is still trying to find those responsible. It is now up to the city and county to tailor the next COVID-19 order for San Antonio. The COVID-19 health transition team is hoping to open the economy in phases, along with an increase in testing and tracing. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says our relatively low case count as a result of the social distancing measures that were put in place early. So a spike in cases could mean stricter measures. Here's a look at the latest numbers. Right now, Bear County has 1,307 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 56 people are in the hospital. 574 have recovered from the illness, but there are still hundreds of active cases. The death toll remains at 44. Two zip codes are now leading with the highest number of cases, 78222, which is where that southeast side nursing home is located, and 78207, which is where the Bear County Jail is. Also, two more inmates have tested positive for a total of 64. Five inmates are in the hospital. 
Bexar County Judge Nelson Wolf says there is a jail population with about of about 3000 with more than 1000 inmates in isolation. Two more deputies have also tested positive for COVID-19 for a total of 36 Bear County deputies. Well, local religious leaders are playing it safe when it comes to reopening churches, despite the governor allowing churches to operate with limits. The Archdiocese of San Antonio has planned to wait until mid-May to hold mass or reevaluate the conditions. Meanwhile, pastors at large churches say they are not in a rush to hold gatherings either. First Baptist Church of San Antonio pastor Chris Johnson says everyone is longing to worship together again, but congregations need to be cautious. What we're sensing and what First Baptist is sensing is that we need to wait and, and we, we're going to wait and see uh, what's best for us and what might be uh, the safest for us. Officially, churches can gather as long as they comply with social distancing practices and look out for those most vulnerable. City health experts say that based on local data, they recommend churches wait a bit longer to hold gatherings. As states begin lifting restrictions, the president is facing growing pressure to increase nationwide testing. And now with worries about a food supply shortage, the president has designated meat processing plants as critical infrastructure. ABC's Inez de la Cuatara has the latest from Washington. This morning, parts of the country back in business. Georgia setting the pace with restaurants now welcoming customers to sit down and have a meal. Beauty salons reopening. It's impossible to practice social distancing in a nail shop. California saying it's weeks away, not months, from easing restrictions. While New York's governor also looking for a path forward. We want to reopen, but we want to do it without infecting more people or overwhelming the hospital system. Simon Property Group, one of the nation's largest mall owners, now planning to reopen 49 of their malls around the country starting May 4th. And in Ohio, officials reversing course on the use of masks. After saying it was mandatory, they're now strongly recommending the measure. Meanwhile, Vice President Pence facing criticism for not wearing a mask during his visit to the Mayo Clinic, even after the hospital informed his team of their policy. I don't have the coronavirus. I, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to be here, to be able to speak to these researchers, these incredible healthcare personnel. This as the top infectious disease expert on the coronavirus task Task Force warns it will likely be another month before anyone who needs a test can get one, uh, telling CNN. We haven't gotten it perfect yet, for, for sure. A lot of people feel okay about what's going on, but others still need to connect those dots, and that's what we're working on. And with at least 21 meat plants closing with thousands of sick workers, the president now signing an executive order under the Defense Production Act to keep plants open as critical infrastructure. There's plenty of supply. Dr. Anthony Fauci now warning of a second wave of infections after the summer if treatments are not discovered. But there is some good news. A promising vaccine candidate now moving into clinical trials at Oxford University. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. 438, 76 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, there may be new concerns this morning about coronavirus and our pets. Why some health experts are sounding the alarm. And up next, heavy rainfall and flooding lead to this water rescue caught on camera in the state of Oklahoma. And taking a look outside with live cam. We have our eyes on the sky. Hey, Mike, are we still going to get lower humidity for the next couple days after today? Yeah, we will. And by the way, there's a uh, new severe thunderstorm warning for kind of northern fringes of our uh, area, northern Blanco County uh, and parts of uh, Hayes County around San Marcos. All right, we'll get updates coming up. In your morning headlines, Texas and the U.S. aren't the only ones trying to restart the economy amid the pandemic. Overseas Greece announced it will gradually start easing lockdown restrictions starting Monday. At that time, citizens will be allowed to move around without written permission, but some will have restrictions. Some shops, including bookstores, even hair salons, will also reopen. Bars and restaurants there are not expected to reopen until June. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson will face Parliament for the first time since having contracted the COVID-19 virus. He tested positive on March 27th and he was hospitalized in early April. He has since made a full recovery and has returned to duty. Meanwhile, the UK continues to struggle to combat the deadly virus. But there is some good news. Prime Minister Johnson and his partner, Carrie Simmons, have also announced the birth of their new baby this morning. Two people had to be rescued from a stormwater channel in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Check this out. Last night, the fire department called the area after getting reports of two men hanging on by cables. 
Authorities say the men jumped under the bridge to seek shelter after hearing tornado sirens. The water level rose quickly and they couldn't get out. But rescuers were able to get to them and get them out safely. Scary situation. Yes. 442, 76 degrees. When it comes to COVID-19, should you be concerned about your pet? We'll hear from health experts. Try that again. Health experts. I can say this, really. You sure it's not Monday? And next, how some local organizations are making low-cost ventilators that can be used everywhere to save lives. In this morning's GMA First Look, could your dog be at risk for the coronavirus? Meet Winston, a two-year-old pug and beloved member of the McLean family from North Carolina. <laughs> it's a good time, like, looking there. Winston is now also the first dog in the U.S. to test positive for coronavirus. I was shocked. Heather McLean, a pediatrician, her husband, an ER doctor, and two kids all got the virus last month, but they never thought to worry about Winston. He had a cough for a couple of days, and um, he wasn't eating his breakfast one day. We gave it to him. He didn't give it to us. So can our pets transfer the virus to us? Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Scientists in San Antonio and Austin using creativity to build low-cost ventilators that can be used around the world. Courtney Friedman explains how an unlikely carport could ultimately help save lives during the COVID-19 pandemic and after. About a month ago, local scientists saw the COVID-19 death toll skyrocket in Italy as hospitals there ran out of ventilators. So they came up with an idea for a low-cost version that could be mass-produced. A usual ventilator costs $30,000 approximately, and th these no low-cost low ambu bag ventilators are costing under $1,000. Ambu bag, short for artificial manual breathing unit, typically used in transport when a patient can't breathe and has to be innovated. Usually, the bags are squeezed by hand to pump air into someone's lungs. But creative minds at UT Health San Antonio and UT Austin School of Engineering changed that. Of all places, they found the answer in a 2016 Toyota Corolla windshield wiper motor. It can run for days continuously and it doesn't heat up. Dr. Mark Feldman, who leads the UT Health San Antonio team, says engineers in Austin attached a wheel to the motor, allowing the device to squeeze the bag like a hand would. We've tried to add back features of a real ventilator. Uh, we can change how often the bag is squeezed, you know, how much, how, how much you squeeze the bag to increase the total volume. We can, we can add pressure to keep the lungs open. Another plus, mobility. When you transport a patient around the hospital, you can't take the ventilator with you. Um, and this is, it only weighs about 15 pounds. It's very small, so it could be used in transporting patients around a hospital. Hoping to get FDA approval within a couple weeks, Dr. Feldman says the small ventilators have successfully been tested on large animals. And soon he hopes to safely test them on human patients who are about to be taken off of regular ventilators. This low-cost approach will, will last long term. You know, it'll end up in rural hospitals that don't have a big budget and can't afford ventilators. I think they'll end up in the third world where they also cannot afford $30,000 ventilators. The research teams have connected with a Dallas company called Thermotech, which is now trying to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars to mass produce the ventilators for use around the world. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. The innovation continues. The innovation at its finest. 448. Let's check on the roadways. Hey, Marcus, what's happening out there? Well, so far it's quiet and hopefully those uh, storms that Mike's talking about, I hate to even say the word, as long as hopefully they stay away from our area for the morning commute. Ah, but uh, let him deliver the bad news right now as we take a look at different trans guide cameras. You can see 410 at Fredericksburg Road. No problems there. And 410 at Starcrest uh, starting to get a few vehicles out there up on the northeast side. 35 at 410. That's looking south and no problems just yet. So all in all, if you're getting ready to leave, hurry up. Hurry up. Yes, so Mike was just updating us about some severe thunderstorm warnings that are starting to pop up on the northern fringes. Yes, northern Blanco County, uh, parts of uh, Gillespie County, way up there, which is just not really in our viewing area, but the Blanco County and then also up there around San Marcos. So outside, obviously, things are calm for the time being. Now, this is the uh, the outline for the severe thunderstorm warning again. It just grazes uh, 
Gillespie County there, northern Blanco County, down almost in towards San Marcos. So it's just on the northern, again, fringes of our viewing area. That's the orange. The yellow is the severe thunderstorm watch. The warning's in effect till 530. The watch is in effect up until 9 o'clock this morning. So here's what it looks like on radar as of right now. And this mass of storms, this is obviously kind of a preemptive uh, severe thunderstorm warning as these storms continue to work their way down basically down to the south. High winds and hail. We're seeing winds in excess of 60 miles per hour and a lot of reports of about inch to inch and a half diameter hail. I want to back this up a little bit just so you can kind of judge for yourself and it's hard to tell is the movement of this down to the south or a little southeasterly eastwardly I should say and so we got to watch it in our north and uh, east county. So here's a closer look at some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms all the way off to the western edge of this. We've got some uh, severe thunderstorm uh, boxes that have been issued for this. So all along this it is a very potent obviously line of thunderstorms and the computer models really aren't I don't think doing a good job picking this up as of right now and the as they initialize off it, everything is off to the east. They're not really taking into account any of those storms there that are moving in towards say Gillespie and uh, Blanco counties. So that's why kind of taking this one with a grain of salt because it keeps everything to the east. I think a lot of this may be a little further to the east. So perhaps um, even parts of Kamal County, New Braunfels, you may have to be on the lookout for this San Marcos later on this morning. So obviously we're going to keep tabs and see exactly what these things do. But the trend is for everything then to continue to work its way down to the southeast, kind of jumping ahead uh, into today. And then we clear on out different uh, computer model and it's got about the same solution as far as keeping everything a little further to the east. But I think we have to take into account that we will have more thunderstorms in some of our eastern counties this morning. And there's the line of that cool front, which will move on through here. Once that moves through, temperatures will be dropping down a little bit and then they rebound up to the mid 80s and we get rid of all this humidity. But this morning things are going to be on the, uh, the rough side, especially like I said, if you're going up I 35 later on this morning or even east on 10 anywhere to the northeast. You have to watch it for these uh, strong thunderstorms. 78 degrees today at noon, so we're in the mid 70s right now. I think we dip down uh, about 70 or even upper 60s, then come back up. Very windy today with much, much lower humidity. It's going to be a comfortable afternoon. Uh, wind out of the northeast at 15, 25 miles per hour. The next couple of days look fantastic. 50s for low temperatures, mid 80s, uh, actually a little bit below normal for lows and about normal or slightly above that for high temperatures. And that's all going to go away. Humidity and heat comes back for the weekend. But of course, we've got to keep a very close eye on what these storms are doing this morning. I'm going to keep watching that. Going to get interesting, isn't it? Uh, potentially, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. We're at 452, 76 degrees. Still ahead, as many are still stuck at home, there's a few new shows for you to stream. We'll tell you what Hulu has to offer. Coming up next. Welcome back. New rules for the Oscars and a big birthday for a Texas country music legend. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A major change for the Oscars because of the coronavirus shutdown. Before this year, movies that went straight to streaming weren't Oscar eligible. The rule said that a film had to play in a commercial theater in Los Angeles for a week straight in order to be considered. But since theaters are shut down, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences is making an exception for films that had a planned commercial release but couldn't open on the big screen. Once theaters reopen, though, the rules go back to normal. Students that didn't get a physical graduation ceremony are getting Oprah and friends. Facebook and Instagram are holding a virtual graduation. Oprah Winfrey will be the commencement speaker. Miley Cyrus will sing her hit song, The Climb. And other speakers include Jennifer Garner, Aquafina, Little Nas X, and Olympic gold medal gymnast Simone Biles. Hashtag graduation 2020 will stream live May 15th. New streaming today on Hulu. It'd be awkward if something happened to us. No one would have to know. It's the critically acclaimed romantic drama Normal People. Based on Sally Rooney's best-selling novel of the same name, Normal People has been getting rave reviews. And he's not on the road again. No one is. But country music legend Willie Nelson has a birthday today. He's 87. While comedy legend Jerry Seinfeld is 66. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 76 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, Via Metropolitan Transit is reporting one of its operators has tested positive for coronavirus. We have the latest. And even though traditional jury service is on hold because of COVID-19, there are still juries at work in the courthouse. We'll take a closer look. Live from Chase at 12. 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This hour, another VIA operator tests positive for coronavirus. More on when this driver was last in contact with passengers. Plus, a certain type of jury is still functioning at the Bear County Courthouse amid the pandemic shutdown. Things are quiet here in San Antonio, but not so much to our north and some of our counties to the east. They could be under the gun for a while. We'll get updated as Mike shows us radar. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 29th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Let's get right to Mike. It looks like it's going to be a busy morning for you. Yeah, especially if you're planning on heading up in toward uh, San Marcos, Austin in the next few minutes and then also I-10 later on. Definitely uh, check ahead or you may want to either leave really early or wait because there's some very strong thunderstorms that are moving down from the, the north. First of all, it is warm. It is extremely humid out there. 76 degrees right now. The dew point's way up to 72. I mean, it's like mid-summer kind of uh, humidity and uh, the wind is out of the southeast pulling in all that humidity. This is what radar looks like right now and it got some well not anything really in our area as of yet as you can see on the fringes of Austin and working its way. All this looks like uh, individual cells are kind of working their way down to the southeast a little bit and it's kind of trending that way and this is also a line that goes back well off to the northwest. There is, as you can see, this box right here. That's a severe thunderstorm warning in effect up until 530 the next half hour for just barely northern portions of uh, Gillespie County, northern Blanco County, and almost in towards San Marcos. And again, I've been kind of staring at this thing. It almost looks like the tail end of it may not have as many lightning strikes, perhaps weakening a bit on the tail end. And it also looks like, especially if you're watching this cell right in here, that it is wanting to slide off to the southeast. However, I think this is going to be grazing. Obviously, some of our uh, north and northeastern counties, obviously San Marcos is under the gun. I think uh, New Braunfels may be a little bit under the gun as well as far as getting some heavy downpours in some of these thunderstorms. High winds and hail are the biggest threats with this. There have been many reports well over 60 mile per hour winds and uh, about inch to inch and a half hail with some of those storms up to the north. So the orange area, that's the severe thunderstorm warning in effect till 530. This yellow, which includes San Marcos and also uh, Gonzales County, this is in effect the watch up until 9 o'clock this morning. So again, the trend is for everything to kind of slide off to the southeast, but I I don't think that means the rest of us are going to be missing out. We will see some rain and even a couple of these uh, thunderstorms. 76 degrees, as I mentioned right now, 75 Randolph. Yeah, everybody is very warm, humid. Mold's on the high side, and that's going to be dropping down the next couple of days. I don't think uh, this morning's reading, though, coming on in here. Cool front's going to move through. That's what these storms are along, is this cool front. And that's going to knock temperatures down initially. So I think by 9, 8, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, we'll drop down about 4 or 5 degrees or so, and then come back up to the mid. 80s. Less humid is going to be very windy today, though, too. As that front passes, there have also been indications that uh, some of the wind gusts have been high as uh, 35, close to 40 miles per hour. Not associated with the th storms necessarily, just the passage of that front. And then the next couple of days, coolish mornings down in the 50s, sunny, mid 80s, low humidity. Fantastic. And it all comes to an end by the weekend. Hot and humid. We're going to keep monitoring, obviously, these storms all morning long and have the very latest. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike. Taking a look at the uh, roadways, folks, we do have a major accident. This is on one of the highways. So we're going down to 410 on the south southwest side. That's going to be westbound 410. Getting reports of a rollover accident just as you're passing Highway 16. So look out for a number of emergency vehicles that will be responding to that major accident. Once again, westbound Loop 410 on the southwest side, just past Highway 16. Now, as we take a look outside through Transguide, 21 and Hildebrand, so far no issues there in 35 Ben Zingleman, north and southbound lanes. Still more than enough room out there. Mark? Thank you, sir. New this morning, we're learning that seven VIA operators and one administrative employee have now tested positive for COVID-19. That includes a bus operator who was just reported positive, uh, rather reported positive test results late yesterday. That operator last reported for duty this past Friday. Meanwhile, three employees, including two operators and an administrative employee, have recovered and were cleared to return to work. VIA says the buses they operated Continue to be sanitized daily. Anyone who may have been in close contact with the operator should call VIA's customer care team at 210-362-2020. Let's take a look at the cases of COVID-19 in our surrounding counties. Hayes County has jumped up to 160 cases. Guadalupe County had an increase of seven for a total of 80. Comal County is at 52. Wilson County, 31. You can also follow the number of cases by county on KSAT.com.
It is the second Fairfax KSAT Rivard Report Poll of the Year. More than 650 registered voters participated in giving their opinions on various issues facing the city right now, most notably the coronavirus. Later on tonight, we will hold a virtual town hall where we will discuss the results with the Fairfax team, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. You can watch the first half right here on KSAT 12. It's during the news at 6 after the mayor and judge give their daily update. And then from 7 to 8, we'll stream the discussion on KSAT.com. Meanwhile, when it comes to the overall response to COVID-19, the majority of participants in the poll say they support how local leaders and government agencies have responded to the pandemic. 74% said they approved of San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierenberg's response. 71% of people approved of Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf's response. And when it came to participants' biggest concern, 59% said they were worried someone in their household would be infected. Food insecurity was another concern, and one of the hardest hit areas is on the city's south side. Many food distributions have taken place. Recently, organizations, the organization Lots of Love held a food giveaway at Pika Pika Plaza for 280 families. Lots of Love will hold another food distribution today and on Friday at the Pika Pika Plaza from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. Though jury service for you and me is on hold because of the pandemic, there are juries at work at the courthouse. They're called grand juries. Their job is to examine cases for what's called probable cause. Paul Venema explains why they're still working and what they've done. Last January, 16-year-old Jessica Medina's body was found outside 18-year-old Stephen Medina's car. She apparently was strangled when she became entangled in her seatbelt and was dragged. Medina, no relation to the victim, was indicted by the grand jury on intoxication manslaughter charges. The case is one of 300 indictments returned by the grand jury last week. We have to do our job. We have to be able to to, to have these cases uh, presented uh, for indictment. In view of uh, safe distancing and the, all the other requirements as a result of the pandemic, how are you able to do that? They are socially distancing uh, themselves. They're wearing masks. Before they come into the courthouse, they have to have their temperature taken. And instead of meeting in a small jury room, they're meeting in larger empty courtrooms. We have to do our job. We have to be able to to, to have these cases uh, presented uh, for indictment. Uh, and if not, then, then the cases have to be dismissed. What's making the difference, he told me, was the jury's commitment. They have al already indicated that they're willing to continue their service because if we had to select a, a, a new grand jury, it would be quite a dilemma for us. It would mean waiting until the pandemic ordered restrictions on jury service are lifted. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help to find a suspect involved in a murder. The crime happened back in September of 2018 in the 9500 block of Perrin Bidal. SAPD says 21 year old Cavusia Davis was shot and killed while sitting in her car. A witness says they saw a yellow Chevrolet Camaro drive away from the scene. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers at 210 224 STOP. You could receive a cash reward if your information leads to an arrest. 508, 76 degrees. Still had more on plans by Facebook to bring a little encouragement to 2020 graduates who won't be able to attend their traditional graduation ceremony. Plus, Krispy Kreme has three new flavors of donuts for you to try. We'll tell you about them next. Donuts. Mm. I think it's time to eat the donuts. Originally, that was it's time to make the donuts. Now it's time to eat them. Yep. All right. Your time now 12 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, two major airlines will start providing face masks to customers in early May. But United says wearing a mask will not be mandatory for its passengers. It will only be encouraged. American Airlines says it will hand out masks and sanitizing wipes only as supplies allow. American flight attendants will have to wear face masks starting May 1st. JetBlue is also making changes. Its passengers will be required to wear masks starting next week. Air travel is still a fraction of what it used to be before the coronavirus, but it is showing a slight uptick this week. Some not so good news for one of America's largest automakers. Ford says it lost nearly $2 billion in the first quarter. Now the company is warning the second quarter could be even worse. Ford says the number of cars sold fell 21% and revenue is down by 15%. 
Automakers across the world have had to suspend production at factories. Many dealerships have been closed due to stay-at-home orders. With millions out of work and millions more working from home and avoiding commutes, the number of people needing cars has dropped radically. Some of you might be adding this to your list of comfort food. Krispy Kreme is rolling out three colorful new donuts filled with cream. The fruit flavors are strawberry, key lime, and lemon glaze. The company says it wanted to create something special. But there is a catch. The donuts are only available for a limited time. Strawberry cream is available this week until May 1st. Key lime will be baked next week from May 5th through the 8th. And lemon glaze will be May 12th through the 15th. Key lime sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. They all do to me. Those are carb-free, right? Oh, yeah. And fat-free. Sure. And sugar-free. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And we'll, I would still try them. 513, <laughs> 76 degrees. Still ahead now that the animated film Trolls World Tour has been a success on digital. The question remains, will other movies follow suit? And next, more on plans by Facebook and Instagram to stream celebrity commencement addresses for 2020 graduates. To all of you doing your part, on the front lines, or at home, turning those living rooms into gyms, getting creative in the kitchen, taking a minute for yourself, and trying to get a good night's sleep. Thank you for doing what you can. We're all in this together. So here's a little something to help. How do you get skin happy 24-7? Aveeno. With prebiotic oat, it hydrates and softens skin. So it looks like this, and you feel like this. Aveeno Daily Moisturizer. Get skin healthy. Real strawberries. Wait, more real strawberries. Special K Red Berries, now with even more real strawberries. Special K, you can't fake delicious. Exactly, 517, one of the biggest movie theater chains of the country will no longer show films from Universal Pictures. It's all over dispute involving streaming movies. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a new battle between a top movie studio and the AMC theater chain. Universal released the movie Trolls World Tour straight to streaming as theaters remain closed during this pandemic. The movie did so well, Universal says it may consider similar moves in the future. AMC is now threatening to ban Universal Films from its theaters. Overnight, Universal said it absolutely believes in the theatrical experience and made no statement to the contrary. Meanwhile, a big decision concerning the Academy Awards for the first time ever film that went straight to streaming will be eligible for an Oscar this year. And Facebook and Instagram are producing a virtual graduation ceremony on May 15th. Oprah will be the keynote speaker, but the class of 2020 will also hear from singer Miley Cyrus, entertainer Aquafina, and others. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 518. Mark. Leslie. Let's check the roadways. Okay, Marcus, we need your help. We still have that one accident, so we're taking a look at uh, the south, southwest side, right there, 410 westbound, headed from Highway 16 right back towards 35 down there in the southwest quadrant of the city. That's where we have that rollover accident being reported as a rollover, so we have a number of emergency vehicles responding out there. Now let's take a look at some other areas. Tweety 1 at Grayson, north and southbound lanes seem to be moving fairly well this morning as we move around. Let's take a look. This is 37 at Jones, north and southbound lanes. No problems there. 21 at 410 up there by the airport. So far, traffic moving along fairly well. And this is 35 at 410 up on the northeast side. I-10 and Crossroads, so far, no issues. And on the southeast side, 37, 410, so far, all is quiet. However, trans guys, switch one of the cameras on us. Uh, a few minutes ago, 35 at Watson Lane, we're starting to see some significant shake uh, to the camera up there. And that's right up in that area where you're saying that the storms are just creeping in. Yeah, and uh, it, it is going to get very, very windy uh, throughout. It's going to be windy throughout the day. And as this line passes on through here. Now, one note of encouragement. We have a we're all on a uh, chat site. It's with the National Weather Service and all the meteorologists around the area. So they, you know, ask questions. We uh, discuss what's going on, obviously, and the Weather Service was just saying that they haven't received any more severe reports in 
recent time, about the past uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. So there's surmising uh, indications and even looking at some of these storms, it looks like they may be trying to ease up ever so slightly. That doesn't mean we're done with this at all. And also up to the uh, northeast of Austin, they've been reporting some just torrential downpours. So I think we can expect some fairly hefty rains associated with this. But even just stepping back and looking at it and watching the colors kind of change, the uh, intense, intense red seems to be easing up a little bit. Now that cell right there obviously is still very, very strong and there's a lot of lightning associated with it, but even the tail end of it appears to be sort of easing up ever so slightly. That doesn't mean we're not going to obviously be seeing some of these uh, thunderstorms with these and that continues to work its way down to the south. So obviously uh, Blanco, San Marcos, you are under the gun and as things are looking as of right now, New Braunfels, obviously Gonzales. Now, as far as here in town, I think we are obviously going to be seeing some of these uh, showers from this. It should be right along 281 east of there and this will continue the trend is for it to kind of work its way off to the southeast but uh, unless this completely falls apart in the next couple of uh, hours and sometimes these storms do actually just kind of fizzle out uh, as the sun is starting to come up but uh, we'll keep an eye on this thing we are going to be seeing some rain from it here's the computer models and again I didn't think they were initializing as well but they are kind of trending again same thing where everything continues to work its way off to the east and to the southeast and we're on 281, that's kind of the, the cutoff line, if you will. Um, and then it continues down there to the southeast, of course. And then a different computer model has about the same solution. Some of these scattered showers, all of the, you know, this kind of falling apart, if you will, or weakening considerably and the heaviest rain being well off there to the east. And then that front, that's about the line right there, moves on through. And I don't even think we see straggling showers in behind this thing. We're going to be, winds are going to clear us on out. And here is what it looks like as far as the uh, outlook. The yellow area is the severe thunderstorm watch in effect till nine o'clock this morning. Right now it includes uh, San Marcos, Hayes County, and then also Gonzalez County and elsewhere right past our viewing area, but the severe thunderstorm warning that orange up until 530. So this that's I would assume going to be allowed to expire. I haven't seen anything from the weather service saying it would be extended. So just keep an eye on that. And like I said, obviously we're going to see some rain. We're going to see some uh, thunderstorms, especially east and northeast. We do have some fog out there right now as well. 76 and the humidity is just sky high. But again, that's all going to be changing as the morning rolls on. This front's going to move on through here. Temperatures will actually drop down somewhat about 70, say mid morning and windy conditions, extremely windy as this thing moves on through here. And that's not even taking into account any thunderstorm winds and then 70 degrees at noon. Much drier air is going to be coming on in 85 for a high temperature. Beautiful afternoon, windy, however, and then tomorrow look at these morning low temperatures down mid 50s. Uh, same thing on Friday, mid 50s up to the mid, maybe upper 80s, still low humidity and it goes away just in time for the weekend. So hot and humid this weekend It's going to stay pretty hot most of next week as well. All right, so we get a little break, and it looks like we're pretty consistent going through most right. of the weekend or early next week. Right, but this morning, especially if you're going up 35, you'd be on the lookout. We're not in the clear just yet. Nope. 523, 76 degrees. Still, still ahead, films like Trolls World Tour are big winners in digital, but are they still eligible for Academy Awards? We will take a look. The lottery numbers as we head to break. You pick three numbers, 681 with a bonus ball of five. The other four numbers, 6799 with the bonus ball of fire, fireball of five, I should say. Cash five numbers, 10, 11, 13, 25, 31, and Mega Millions, 13, 19, 53, 54, 63, Mega Ball 17, Mega Plier 3. Trolls World Tour was set to open just as movie theaters were closing due to the pandemic. Universal kept its April 10th release date, but moved the movie to video on demand, and it seems to have worked. The studio says the animated sequel made $95 million over its first three weeks. By comparison, the first Trolls film made $125 million over that span, but studios keep most of the revenues from digital rental fees. They split ticket sales for theatrical releases 50-50 with movie movie theaters. We'll see whether other films that shift to streaming have similar success. 
Movies that don't launch in theaters could still win Oscars. The Motion Picture Academy has changed its rules. For the first time, films premiering on VOD or streaming can still qualify for the Academy Awards if their planned debuts in theaters were canceled due to the COVID-19 related theater closures. Films also have to be made available on the Academy's members-only streaming site within 60 days of release. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's now 527, 76 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, some are pushing for the U.S. to ease COVID-19 restrictions, while others say that could pose a serious health threat. Plus, school districts in some states calling it quits early, saying remote learning is taking a toll on students, parents, and teachers. And when it comes to saving money in these times, how financial experts say you should be saving money for when you need it most. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, April 29th. Thank you so much for being with us. Some of our neighbors up to the north of us, well, they're getting quite the show from Mother Nature. Let's get the very latest from Mike Osterhage. Yeah, I was just trying to get uh, things updated right here. That's uh, talk more about that. That was an outlook outline for the uh, severe thunderstorm watch, which is still in effect. Here's what it looks like on radar right now. And yes, the picture is definitely changing. I mean, that's still pretty ugly looking up there to the north and especially further off to the northeast. But notice how a lot of the darker reds have kind of gone away. There's still obviously some pockets in here, uh, but this overall system has definitely been weakening. Now, there's still obviously a lot of lightning associated with this, some very high winds as well as some hail, and this will continue to work its way down to the south. Now, as far as it first of all notice how a lot of the severe thunderstorm watch was deleted in behind this storm so it's moving through fairly quickly however as you can see there's still a severe thunderstorm watch in effect up until nine o'clock it does include san marcus and then also gonzalez county the severe thunderstorm warning that had been effect for portions of our northeastern counties there that was allowed to expire at 5 30. however the weather service has sort of replaced that to take into account those storms moving through a significant weather advisory which just means we're going to be seeing some pretty hefty thunderstorms, but not reaching severe levels. So you can still see a little bit of pea sized hail and some very strong winds, 40, 50 mile per hour winds. That does include San Marcos, New Braunfels, uh, Seguin, and then going down to the southeast. That's significant weather advisory. It does not include Bear County as of right now. So we'll watch those storms continue to work their way to basically the southeast. Step outside, it is basically hot and humid out there. Mid 70s right now. This is a summertime air with all of the, uh, the humidity out there as well. Molds on the, the high side, grass pecan are both low throughout the day. What's bringing those thunderstorms is a cool front, and that's going to move through here. It's going to be very windy, not even associated with the storms, but just as the front passes on through, and it's going to stay very windy uh, throughout the day. Temperatures will be dropping down. Humidity is going to be dropping like a rock. It's going to be a gorgeous day today, 85 degrees, but it is going to be very windy with winds about uh, 15, 25 miles per hour gusting from there even throughout the day. Great throughout the rest of the next couple of days. Weekend forecast coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on, Marcus. Well, Mike, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, we did manage to clear up that accident. That was the rollover accident down there on the southwest side, 35 between Highway 16 and 35. I'm sorry, on 410 between Highway 16 and 35. Right now, let's take a look outside through Trans Guide. 21 and Sprucewood Lane, no issues there. I-10 at the Y, we had a problem overnight. As you can see, everything's cleared up. Everything's moving along nicely with no problems there. Highway 90 at Lackland. Leslie? Thank you, Marcus. A house fire on the east side created some scary moments for a family and firefighters. They all thought a man was inside the burning home. This happened in the 100 block of F Street. Katrina Weber joins us with a live report. So it sounds like the man was not in the house after all, Katrina. No, he was not in the house. Unbeknownst to his family, he had gone out and he came home right in the middle of all the commotion. Now, just within the last few minutes, we had arson investigators arrive here as well. They are working behind this home uh, that you see right there. That is where the fire happened. I want to give you a look at the video so you can see a little bit better what happened uh, about 345 this morning. That's when the firefighters got called out here. They say they found a small building behind the main home that was fully involved in flames. And again, the family who lives in the front house thought that their father was inside that burning house. 
So they were pretty upset, as you can imagine. Uh, police, uh, fire, firefighters say that they had to call the police to sort of calm down the family while they went there and battled the flames. But again, the man who lived inside that little structure did show up in the middle of it. He is okay, but there is uh, quite a bit of damage back there. And arson investigators, as I mentioned, are here trying to find the cause of that fire. They say that that home back there had no working utilities, so they think it is a bit suspicious that there was a fire. But again, arson investigators will make that call. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Just about 535, the coronavirus is posing at least two major threats to the United States, health and wealth. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, some states are taking steps towards reopening as a way to boost jobs, but some say doing so could cause COVID-19 to spread further. President Trump signs an executive order to keep meat processing plants running during the COVID-19 pandemic that could protect companies from legal problems if workers become ill. That'll solve any liability problems where they had certain liability problems and uh, will be in very good shape. This comes after a number of companies, including Tyson Foods, were considering a major shutdown of facilities. And as the White House expects to see U.S. jobless numbers jump to as high as 20 percent by June. The unemployment rate at that point will be something that's about as high as something that we haven't seen since, you know, the 1930s. While there are rallies calling for the country to reopen. <laughs> Some have concerns about the risk for workers. It's just a little bit alarming to see that kind of an increase in the potential for loss of life and for at least people being very sick in our community. Georgia, one of the states that has started to reopen, is now projected by one model to see its daily tally of COVID-19 deaths nearly doubled by August. Over the past three days, we have seen the highest number of people coming in related to COVID-19 than we have during the entirety of this pandemic. The U.S. now has more than a million confirmed cases of COVID-19, according to Johns Hopkins University. That's more than twice the amount from April 10th. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Also making headlines today, some of the sailors who tested positive for COVID-19 on the USS Theodore Roosevelt will soon be returning to the ship. Defense officials say the sailors have now tested negative twice. The Navy isn't saying how many of the sailors are being allowed to return which is in Guam, by the way, nearly 5,000 servicemen and women had to get off to get tested. Roosevelt is the same ship that a naval captain was worried about last month. Captain Brett Crozier was fired after he expressed concerns about his crew's health on the ship. New study shows that the world's insect population is declining, and it's not because of the coronavirus. Researchers found that land-dwelling insects are facing a 1% loss every year. A study found insects are being affected by climate change, pesticides, light pollution, and habitat destruction. The study did show that a number of freshwater insects did increase, but those kinds of insects are a small proportion of the world insect population. 537, 76 degrees. Go ahead, saving for emergencies can be hard when bills are piling up, but financial experts have some advice that can help you get ready for tough times. And up next, the latest on some tough decisions for several governors when it comes to educating the nation's children. Head live cam giving us a look outside. Mike's it's going to be windy today, but it's also going to be nice. We just got to get through these storms to the north of us. 540, welcome back now to the continuing debate over schools teaching children online. Many teachers are growing more frustrated and many schools are closing early. ABC's Kimberly Brooks has details. This morning, schools around the country calling it quits. I think it's the best decision. It makes sense to me. It's been very difficult. The challenges of remote learning taking their toll on students, parents, and teachers. It's hard to manage the time that your students have, the time that you need. If you're on a call and they need to be on a call, it, it becomes quite the juggling act. Districts in Washington, D.C. and Georgia are among those deciding to close up their academic shop three weeks early. It's hard enough to pay attention when the teacher is right in front of you. And now New York City is revising its student grading system. We have to recognize that some kids are having a tougher time because of this crisis. For elementary and middle schools, letter grades have been traded for either meeting standards or needs improvement, while high schoolers now have the option to be marked on a pass-fail system. Schools also plan to offer summer courses to help students who've fallen behind. Meanwhile, in California... We are considering 
the prospect of an even earlier school year. The governor is already looking to make up for lost time. It's early as late July, early August. Still, whenever school resumes, it will most likely be a very different experience for students. A draft memo from the CDC obtained by the Associated Press recommends schools keep desks at least six feet apart, do away with field trips, and have students eat lunch in their classrooms instead of the cafeteria. And that was ABC's Kimberly Brooks reporting right now, 542, 76 degrees. Coming up next, we have some of the top ways you can make the best financial decision when it comes to saving for emergencies. Just about 545, emergencies can happen anytime. And the aftermath could be costly if you haven't saved enough money to cover your finances. Digital journalist Ivan Adetta has some tips to help you save for when you need it most. And this week's Money It's Personal. Saving for emergencies feels hard when bills are piling up in the mailbox, but it can save you a lot of headache in the long run if you're financially prepared. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is providing some tips to help you put away even small amounts of money that can help make a big impact over time. First, start putting aside what you can to help cover common emergencies such as a broken motor or a trip to the hospital which could become a costly debt if you're not prepared. The CFPB says you should prioritize a dedicated savings account for these types of emergencies as one of your top savings goals. Next, you should set up some guidelines for how you can use your emergency savings fund. Determine what you think is an emergency and don't be afraid to use your money. But you should remember to rebuild the savings account you withdrew money from. And if you want to make saving even easier for yourself, set up automatic reoccurring transfers at a rate that works with your paycheck. These transfers from your checking to your savings can happen as frequently as every week. The CFPB also recommends putting in any extra money you have into savings to help you during trying times. Lastly, you can use your tax refund check to help you reach your financial goals. You can make a plan to allocate a portion of those funds to go into your savings account. For The Nine, Ivan Herrera. The coronavirus pandemic has caused lots of people to lose their jobs. But with many businesses reopening now, the help wanted sign is now out. Places like uh, in Live Oak, Tithing Transport LLC looking to hire a Class A CDL driver. CVS looking for a few pharmacy technicians that can earn up to $13 an hour. And Subway in various locations in San Antonio are looking to hire sandwich artists. And these are just a few positions out of the thousands of available jobs in the San Antonio area right now. You can find more job openings at WorkInTexas.com. A reminder, Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio is scheduled to hold a food distribution at their Eastside Clubhouse later today. That's right next to MLK Park. They have teamed up with the San Antonio Food Bank to get fresh produce and dry goods to those in need. You don't need to be a club member to get the emergency food. The distribution will start at 3 in the afternoon and end at 6 p.m. or until food runs out. Time for a traffic update at 547. Hey, Marcus, what's happening? Well, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, still uh, looking great out there. We had an accident earlier, rollover accident down there on the southwest side, 35 between, I'm sorry, 410 between 35 and Highway 16. And then we had a minor accident on the access road of 21. That's already cleared up. Let's take a look outside through Transguide Highway 90 there at Lackland. So far, traveling both directions, still running smoothly with no problems here at 35 Ben Ziegelman. Thank you, Marcus. Mike has some good news from the Humane Society. Yeah, before we get to weather, and uh, first of all, it's not, it's looking better as far as good. anything severe this morning. We've still got some pretty good uh, thunderstorms. First of all, San Antonio Humane Society is now doing no contact adoption processes for people that want to, you know, adopt during these times. They've implemented a very safe way to adopt animals. Uh, so a member of the public, you submit an application. You're asked to email it to adoption at S-A-H-U-M, excuse me, S-A-Humane, pardon me, dot org. With your contact info, the pet you're applying for, you can find that online with their ID number as well, proof of residency, government-issued ID. Then they're going to schedule a, an interview over the phone. If the adoption's approved, then a no-contact pickup is scheduled. The Humane Society is going to set the pet in the receiving room. You go in, you pick it up. Adoption staff member will monitor it, but 
between a glass, a the glass window. between them, mm -hmm. something like that. And adoptions and receiving, you can answer questions as needed. They're also still hoping the community can donate. San Antonio Humane Society Emergency Fund. If you want to donate, just go to sahumane.org slash COVID-19. So what I was saying is there's a piece of glass between you that can and the person. Yeah. So yeah. 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 It's all Don't safe. Monitor. Hey, let's get to the weather now and still in store for some uh, pretty good rain this morning, especially north and northeast of San Antonio. Nothing is showing up right now. You're going to be greeted by a lot of uh, warm, humid air, and then that's going to all be changing. So here's what's going on on radar. And this morning, this thing was just a monster up there, basically, as it uh, passed through Austin. We still obviously have a lot of lightning strikes that are being detected right now, but overall, these storms have been settling down. The weather service has indicated they have not got any reports, got any reports of any severe weather in probably about the past hour. They've had some many reports of very strong winds and uh, at times earlier this morning, hail as large as uh, inch to inch and a half. Now, there is still going to be some uh, heavy winds as well as some heavy downpours and hail associated with some of these storms as they continue to work their way basically to the south and southeast. Now, as far as the computer models, everything is, again, kind of leaning off to the south and southeast. This one does not show enough of the thunderstorms in and around, say, New Braunfels, Seguin, up in portions of the hill country. What it is, though, showing is that line right there. That's the front that this is all associated with. That will move through. It's actually going to drop temperatures down a little bit. Then the temperatures will rebound. Drier air comes in here, and it's going to be a fantastic day. It's also going to be very windy, not even associated with any of these thunderstorms. It's just going to be windy in behind this front. Now, as far as the watches, advisories, things like that. There is still a severe thunderstorm watch in effect up until 9 o'clock. It does include Hayes County and Gonzales County in our viewing area. However, the Weather Service has also issued what they call a significant weather advisory, and that's just to be on the lookout because there are going to be some pretty hefty thunderstorms that uh, are going to have some strong winds that won't reach severe levels, but it's still going to be very windy and also probably some pea-sized hail. So be on the lookout for that. And the significant weather advisory does include uh, places like Fredericksburg, Blanco, San Marcos, New Braunfels, Seguin, and then going down to the southeast. Does not include San Antonio, but we will see some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms and obviously very blustery winds as this moves on through. So this morning, just be on the lookout. If you're high, sliding up uh, or going up 35, I should say, or out I-10, definitely be on the lookout for some of these thunderstorms and the heavy downpours. There's been a lot of reports of some very heavy downpours because all this very moist air is uh, getting squeezed out. And so that's why we're seeing some very hefty rain with some of these. So we're kind of under the gun as far as some heavy rain thunderstorms for the next couple of hours. And the front moves through here and all that's going to be moved on out as the morning rolls on. And we'll be back to 78 degrees. So we're in the mid 70s right now. Front moves through. We're going to be dropping down and then coming back up with temperatures. Humidity is going to go away. Wind is going to be out of the northeast at 15, 25 miles per hour. That doesn't include any of the stronger winds associated with those thunderstorms as they move on through. 85 this afternoon. Great day, but windy, low humidity. Nice and pleasant the next couple of mornings, and we'll be up in the uh, mid and upper 80s then going through Friday. No, it won't last forever. As a matter of fact, it won't last into the weekend. Back to the heat and humidity, mid 90s, very humid, and going into next week. So again, um, Seguin, New Braunfels, north of there, up into portions of the hill country, you're going to be seeing some of those heavier thunderstorms this morning. High winds, maybe some pea-sized hail. All right, hang on, folks. Right now we're 553, 76 degrees. Coming up next, the world famous Air Force Thunderbirds and the Navy's Blue Angels are flying over cities to thank COVID-19 healthcare workers. Video you've got to see. That's right. That's coming up. Right now we're going to take a look at all your lottery numbers. Pick three, six, eight, one, Fireball five. Daily four, six, seven, nine, nine, Fireball five. And your cash five numbers, 10, 11, 13, 25, and 31. And Mega Millions, 13, 19, 53, 54, 63, with a Mega Ball of 17 and a Mega Plier of 3. Coming up here on GMA on a Wednesday morning, the very latest as the number of confirmed cases in the United States of coronavirus tops 1 million, the death toll nearing 60,000. We here at ABC News are learning that these numbers might even be a little low. The numbers of deaths could even be double. 
We'll talk about it right here on GMA. Well, in the coming weeks, the Air Force Thunderbirds and Navy Blue Angels will be flying over cities around America, all in an effort to say thank you to those on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yesterday, the elite teams flew in formation over Manhattan. Look at that, right over New York City, parts of New Jersey and Philadelphia, where healthcare workers came out to cheer. San Antonio is among the cities scheduled for a flyover. We will keep you updated on when that is scheduled to happen. We promise more than 125,000 birthday cards and well with wishes have poured in for a British World War II veteran who gained international notoriety for his COVID-19 fundraising efforts. Captain Tom Moore raised more than 29 million pounds or $36 million for National Health Service by walking laps in his garden with a walker. Moore's cards will be on display at a nearby school for his 100th birthday, which is tomorrow. Happy birthday, sir. 557 still have the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. We often see toys marketed to boys and other girls, others to girls, but buying gender specific toys could cause more harm than good, according to some experts. We'll have info from a new study. Let's check Transguide right now. Roads are dry here in town, but again, big storms brewing out there, affecting some of the counties just outside our viewing area. Will we be included when they get closer? We'll get an update from Mike Oster H. VIA has reported an increase in the positive COVID-19 cases that have affected their employees. Just ahead on GMSA, the latest numbers. As states begin lifting restrictions, the administration is facing growing pressure to ramp up testing. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we've had some pretty significant storms to the north of us, but Mike says we are in actually for a couple of days of nice weather, except for the wind. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, it's Wednesday, April 29th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So Mike, how are those storms looking? Well, they are still um, looking pretty, uh, pretty strong. Let me uh, run over <laughs> run, here. I'm just Michael, making a run, couple of last minute run. adjustments. And he's coming around the corner and by a nose. It's Mike Oster. <laughs> He'll be coming yeah, around take the, the corner. Take the platform <laughs> here. At least things have definitely settled down because uh, there are That's some good. really, really strong storms. Although as the storms move through Bergstrom Airport up in Austin, they recorded a 54 mile per hour wind. Wow. Gas. Oh, I believe it. They With were these. pretty vigorous earlier, weren't yeah, they? Yeah. And so that's what we can expect. Not really reaching severe criteria, but that's why there's a significant weather advisory posted for uh, say New Braunfels, Seguin, parts of uh, up and toward uh, Fredericksburg in the down to the southeast. Doesn't include San Antonio, but I think we will see some uh, some thunderstorms around here. So obviously nothing's going on right now except the uh, the heat and humidity. And here's this line of thunderstorms. And I know this thing, yeah, believe it or not, this has definitely weakened compared to what it looked like earlier this morning. Some of the heavier storms are still down here to the southeast and that continues to be the trend. But obviously there's still some fairly hefty thunderstorms and they are now moving in towards San Marcos, New Braunfels, you're in line and these are basically now again the trend had been to move down to the southeast a little bit but these are uh, pretty much almost looks like moving just about straight south. So obviously a lot of uh, cloud to ground lightning strikes with these also along with very strong winds associated with these thunderstorms expect or don't be surprised if you see a little bit of pea sized hail. Again, we're not seeing the hail reaching severe levels nor the winds reaching severe levels, but we will have strong winds and a little bit of pea sized hail and also some hefty downpours associated with some of these thunderstorms. So again, just starting to move in towards San Marcos and New Braunfels. Canyon Lake, Blanco, you're starting to see some of these, as well as uh, Sister Dale, you are going to be under the gun. And these cells almost look like they are wanting to drift a little more to the kind of southwestwardly. So just be on the lookout this morning. Now, as far as severe thunderstorm, watch. That's still in effect for uh, Hayes County, San Marcos, as well as Gonzales. But like I said, it is New Braunfels, Seguin, Fredericksburg, uh, where the significant weather advisory was issued again for the high winds and hail. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Bear County might be added to that as time rolls on this morning as those thunderstorms move on through here. Temperatures are extremely warm and humid mid 70s as of right now. Molds on the high side it's probably going to be high in this morning's uh, reading that comes out, but should drop down the next couple of days. So temperatures will actually be dropping down a little bit once this front passes on through because it does have much cooler, drier air and not even 
associated with the thunderstorms. We're going to have windy conditions as this front passes on through here throughout the rest of today. 78 degrees then at noon. Things are going to clear out nicely. Gorgeous day. Very windy though. Dry air 85 for a high temperature later on today. Next couple of days look great. Will it last to the weekend? Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo and I guess even on the roads, kind of the calm before the storm, not to use calm before cliche. the storm. No access right now. So there's possibility of pea size hail. Yes, and uh, hefty downpours and windy. Are there any substitutions if you don't like peas? I mean, I don't mind peas, but some kids <laughs> might want carrots or coleslaw or something else. Thank but. you, officer. <laughs> <laughs> right now, just mess with you, Mike. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, like Mike said, no accidents, but that's right now. So you just heard his forecast. If any of that moves in, that could uh, change our commute significantly. Hopefully everybody reaches their destination before uh, that happens. Now 37 at Jones, north and south on lanes, new issues and 21 at 410. You can see uh, no buildup of the uh, traffic just as yet. And 21 at Grayson, so far everything looks good. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Our investigators are looking through what's left of a man's home on the east side. It went up in flames early this morning and caused a bit of panic among some people. Katrina Weber is live where it happened, which is the 100 block of F Street. She has a live report. Do firefighters have a reason to believe the fire was not accidental? Well, not necessarily. They do think it's a bit odd that a house that had no working utilities would go up in flames. But that is what arson investigators are here to figure out how it started. They're working behind a house that's behind this truck. I think the video will give you a better look at what's been going on. It was around 3.45 this morning when firefighters got here. They found a tiny building behind a main house here on F Street that had gone up in flames. Now, some people were here. They told firefighters their father was inside that burning building. Firefighters were working feverishly to get to him. The family was very upset, as you can imagine, and firefighters had to call police in to calm them down. Well, in the middle of all this commotion, the man who they thought was inside happened to walk up. Unbeknownst to his family, he actually went out for the night. He came up. He was fine. No one was injured, but his house has quite a bit of damage. It took a big hit from this fire. And again, firefighters say there were no working utilities, so they're not exactly sure what sparked this fire. But that is why they called arson investigators here. They are here. Firefighters a few minutes ago had to go back in because things started smoking up. But we assume that they have it all under control because it looks like they're packing up once again. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a violent road rage incident near North Star Mall. Police say it happened around the mall or near the mall around 915 last night. A man in the passenger seat of a vehicle was shot in the stomach. The driver took him to his home in the 1700 block of La Monda, which is near West Avenue and Bassey. That's where they called police and the passenger was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. The victims say they only saw a gray vehicle drive off after the shooting. San Antonio police say one woman is in the hospital after rolling her car. They say it happened around midnight at Sky Blue and Bitters. Officers say the woman was speeding. She lost control of the vehicle and rolled it into trees on the side of the road. She is recovering in the hospital. Police say she will be tested for DWI. We have new information this morning from VIA. The number of positive COVID-19 cases within their company continues to increase, affecting both administrative employees and bus operators. Alicia Barrera is live with the latest numbers from VIA Metropolitan Transit. Alicia? Good morning. Well, here's the latest numbers from VIA. In total, there are seven bus operators who have tested positive for COVID-19 and one administrative employee who has tested positive. And just yesterday, VIA says that they received those positive test results from their seventh bus operator. And so far, here's what we know about that person. According to VIA, the, on Friday, April 24th, the bus driver reported mild symptoms. VIA says once they were notified, they followed VIA's contagious virus protocol for employees, which is designed to limit the exposure to others. And then that bus driver was referred to the city county pre-approved testing site for frontline workers and first responders. Again, that was Friday, April 24th. According to VIA, that same day, Friday, was the last day the operator reported for duty. On your screen now, you'll see the, the routes this bus 
bus operator handled up to 10 days prior to reporting their symptoms. In those 10 days, it shows the employee operated 14 buses throughout the city. According to VIA, those buses have been sanitized daily and have also undergone the enhanced cleaning. VIA says they're in the process of contact tracing with coworkers and others. And if you're a VIA customer who thinks they were in close contact with that bus operator, was on those bus routes, you're asked to call VIA at 210. That number should be listed on your screen. I don't have it here. Um, but again, if you're in close contact with uh, that bus driver, you, you are asked to call that number on your screen. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. We will try to get you that phone number shortly. The annual Balcones Heights Jazz Festival is postponed indefinitely due to the pandemic. The festival takes place every Friday night in July, but city officials say the uncertainty around public events in the months ahead is causing them to wait. Each concert night attracts more than 3,000 people at the Wonderland of the Americas Amphitheater, which could easily be more than the allowable group size. City officials say they're confident the festival will resume and adapt to reopening standards in Bear County as soon as feasible. And now it's 6.09 as states begin lifting restrictions. President Donald Trump facing growing pressure to increase nationwide testing. And now with worries about the food supply shortage, the president has designated meat processing plants as critical infrastructure. ABC's Inez de la Cuetera has the latest from Washington. Good morning. As the number of coronavirus cases here in the U.S. tops 1 million, some governors are now pressing the administration to ramp up testing, which many say will be crucial to safely reopening the economy. This morning, parts of the country back in business. Georgia setting the pace with restaurants now welcoming customers to sit down and have a meal. Beauty salons reopening. It's impossible to practice social distancing in a nail shop. California saying it's weeks away, not months, from easing restrictions, while New York's governor also looking for a path forward. We want to reopen, but we want to do it without infecting more people or overwhelming the hospital system. Simon Property Group, one of the nation's largest mall owners, now planning to reopen 49 of their malls around the country starting May 1st. And in Ohio, officials reversing course on the use of masks. After saying it was mandatory, they're now strongly recommending the measure. Meanwhile, Vice President Pence facing criticism for not wearing a mask during his visit to the Mayo Clinic, even after the hospital informed his team of their policy. I don't have the coronavirus. I, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to be here, to be able to speak to these researchers, these incredible healthcare personnel. This as the top infectious disease expert on the coronavirus task force warns it will likely be another month before anyone who needs a test can get one. Dr. Anthony Fauci now warning of a second wave of infections after the summer if treatments are not discovered. But there is some good news. A promising vaccine candidate now moving into clinical trials at Oxford University. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. We are continuing to look at the results of the latest Bear Facts KSOT Rivard Report poll. Much of the poll asked about the pandemic and how it was impacting lives across Bear County. One of the topics asked was how parents feel about distance learning while the schools remain closed. Of the more than 600 people polled, 48% of parents feel distance learning is not productive for their child. Meanwhile, only a third of respondents said it is productive. About 18 percent of parents say their kid is not attending school virtually. Paul was also asked what people are most looking forward to after the pandemic. Topping the list, socializing with friends and family. Others say they're excited to eat out, go back to work and be able to attend religious services. And be sure to join us for an in-depth discussion about the biggest concerns locals have during the COVID-19 pandemic. KSAT 12 will host a virtual town hall today to go over results from the latest Bear Facts KSAT Reward Report poll. Starts on KSAT 12 this evening at 6.30, then we'll live stream the second part from 7 to 8. You can also go over all the results of the poll right now on KSAT.com. And we've got that VIA customer care team number for you. We do. It's 210-362-2020. Again, it's 210-362-2020. We will have it again coming up later in the newscast. Right now, it's just about 613, 75 degrees. All right, you may not like insects, but they are important to the health of the planet. And a new study found out just how much they've been dying. Joe Biden won the state of Ohio uh, Democratic primary, but the latest election was a test run for what could happen in the general election amid the pandemic.
and live cam giving us a look outside. So happy to have you with us on this Wednesday morning. We'll check in with Mike and get an update on these storms he's been tracking. 616, we're going to talk to Mike coming up in just a few minutes because the weather situation is continuing to change. We've got heavy thunderstorms headed this way. But that is ahead. Former Vice President Joe Biden won Ohio's primary, pushing the presumptive nominee closer to officially clinching the Democratic presidential nomination. However, the Ohio election was less about the now one candidate primary and more about how states can vote via mail amid a pandemic. Ohio canceled its in-person election hours before polls were supposed to open back in March. The state's election department reports one and a half million people voted by mail in this year's primary compared to 3.2 million in 2016. Another candidate may be entering the 2020 presidential race, former Republican and now independent Congressman Justin Amash from Michigan has formed an exploratory committee for a long shot bid as a libertarian candidate. He was the only House Republican to support impeaching President Donald Trump during the Russia investigation. Congressman eventually voted for both articles against the president as an independent. He would have to win the Libertarian Party's nomination at the convention in Austin, which, by the way, is scheduled for the end of May. Let's rush over right now and see how traffic's looking at 617. Any new accidents to report, Marcus? Nope, actually, things look pretty good as we uh, take a look. This is the map. Sorry. Hi, Mike. That's okay. Hey. <laughs> you just wanted to make an appearance, huh? Light, Marcus. No. That's okay. We end up playing Ring Around the Rosie Hot Potato around here. Right now, as you take a look at the uh, issues, or no issues right there, the highways look pretty good. Let's move over to Transguide. I-10 and Frio, inbound, outbound lane, still looking good, all the way over to I-10 at 410. So, so far, we've not seen any of that uh, stuff. I'm not going to say it because I don't want it to happen here. Uh, hopefully everybody can reach their morning commute before. It's it's on its way. Uh, if you're up around, you know, heading up I-35, yeah. we've got the rain coming on in there. Well, you yeah. were worried about these storms clipping San Antonio earlier, Mike, and it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah, but I mean, there still are indications that kind of the mm -hmm. western edge of this is wanting to just sort of still be a little bit erode stronger. a little bit. Uh, oh, that's good. Erode. Yeah. That's good then. Yeah, uh, we still have uh, a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for a couple of counties, and that's a significant weather advisory. So I'm going to run through that in just a second. But uh, first of all, take a look outside with a uh, live cam and obviously like Marcos was talking about nothing is showing up here yet but uh, we will see some rain around here this morning so step back and take a look at the the big picture obviously the majority of the lightning is well down here to the east and to the southeast south of Houston if you're going out 10 obviously you're going to run into a lot of this and then moving in a little bit closer notice how the tail end of this does appear to be sort of weakening a little bit. Now, there's still some heavy downpours up there around uh, Blanco, uh, moving in toward Canyon Lake right now, San Marcos, New Braunfels. You're going to be getting some of this fairly heavy rain, but this whole line is kind of drifting, but individual cells want to drift down to the uh, southeast a little bit more. And high winds and hail. As the storm moved through uh, Bergstrom Airport up there in Austin, 54 mile per hour winds were recorded. Don't be surprised if there is a little bit of pea-sized hail associated with this. And the Weather Service, as I mentioned, has issued a, a significant weather advisory. that uh, It doesn't include San Antonio Bear County right now, and it's for New Braunfels, Seguin, uh, up around Canyon Lake, heading in toward Blanco, but it expires at 6:30. They haven't indicated. Weather Service hasn't indicated if it's going to extend that or expand it at all as of right now. But one thing for sure, you can see obviously some very uh, hefty downpours as well as a lot of uh, lightning with these storms, high winds, and maybe some pea-sized hail. This computer model is still indicating that the heaviest rain is going to stay off to the east and we'll have a couple of those showers and thunderstorms, but it seems like the western edge of this is still going to erode a little bit. And this line right here is going to be the front moving on through. So aside from any strong winds associated with thunderstorms, the front itself is going to be bringing uh, some pretty good wind in behind it, about 15, 25 miles per hour gusting on top of that throughout the rest of today. And we'll still have a few showers left over throughout the morning hours. And then this guy's going to continue to clear on out. Also, temperatures will be dropping down. So we're in the mid 70s as of right now. And then throughout the rest of the day or rest of the morning, we drop down and come back up. Here's what uh, as far as the the, the severe 
weather uh, outlook. We do have the severe thunderstorm watch in effect again for Hayes as well as Gonzales counties. Everything else is out of our viewing area. This is until nine o'clock and I wouldn't be surprised as these storms move on through here if some of these counties are deleted from this as it continues to work its way down to the south. What's not indicated on that map, of course, that significant weather advisory just talking about those stronger thunderstorms not reaching severe levels. Now, as far as visibility, we do have some fog to deal with right now around Hondo and some down around Pleasanton. Not bad around New Braunfels, but as you can see, it gets a little foggy further up I-35. Temperatures are way above normal right now in the mid-70s, and we've got a lot of humidity out there. It's like midsummer kind of humidity with these dew point temperatures. The measure of moisture in the mid-70s, so there's a lot of water to be squeezed out as well which is why we can see some pretty hefty downpours with some of these thunderstorms. Once that front moves on through here, the humidity is going to go away. We drop below 60 for dew point temperature, so it's going to be very comfortable and that dry air will continue to work its way in here throughout the rest of today and the next couple of days. So it's going to be fantastic the next couple of days. Then the heat and humidity will come back in just in time for the weekend. So this morning we're going to see temperatures drop down to about 70 after that front moves on through here. Heavy rain can be expected, high winds, maybe some pea-sized hail. Then we start to clear on out, 78 at noon, and then 85 for a high temperature today. Wind out of the northeast at about 15, 25 miles per hour and uh, gusting from there. But a beautiful day, aside from the fact it's going to be windy and we'll have much lower humidity. Tomorrow, look at that, mid-50s, pleasant morning, 85 for a high, great on Friday, and the heat and humidity come back in here just in time for the weekend. But again, it's right now. Watch out, heavy downpours, a lot of lightning, high winds, and maybe some pea-sized hail with some of these thunderstorms. I'm oh. with Marcus, though. What if you don't like peas? Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Try the carrots. I do like peas. Okay. 623, 75 degrees. There are new concerns this morning about coronavirus and our pets after a dog in North Carolina tested positive. We have more in your GMA First Look coming up after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a hot dog or kalachi. We are Circle K. I wanted more from my COPD medicine. That's why I've got the power of one, two, three medicines with Trelegy. The only FDA approved once daily three in one COPD treatment. Trelegy, the power of one, two, three. Trelegy, one, two, three. Trelegy. With Trelegy and the power of one, two, three, I'm breathing better. Trelegy works three ways to open airways, keep them open, and reduce inflammation for 24 hours of better breathing. Trelegy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Trelegy is not for asthma. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trelegy more than prescribed. Trelegy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Think your COPD medicine is doing enough? Maybe you should think again. Ask your doctor about One's Daily Trilogy and the power of 123. Trilogy, 123. Save at Trilogy.com. In this morning's GMA First Look, could your dog be at risk for the coronavirus? Meet Winston, a two-year-old pug and beloved member of the McLean family from North Carolina. <laughs> it's a good time, like, looking there. Winston is now also the first dog in the U.S. to test positive for coronavirus. I was shocked. Heather McLean, a pediatrician, her husband, an ER doctor, and two kids all got the virus last month, but they never thought to worry about Winston. He had a cough for a couple of days, and um, he wasn't eating his breakfast one day. We gave it to him. He didn't give it to us. So can our pets transfer the virus to us? Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. A new study shows that the world insect population is declining. Researchers looked at data from 166 long-term surveys, mostly conducted in the 80s. They found that most insects faced a 1% loss every year. The study, published in the journal Science, found that insects are being affected by climate change, pesticides, light pollution, and habitat destruction. 
Iconic Bollywood actor Irfan Khan has died. You may not recognize the name, but you may recognize the face. He was known for his roles in Slumdog Millionaire and Life of Pi. Khan was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in 2018. Representatives for the actor say Khan fought to the very end and always inspired everyone who came close to him. Irfan Khan was only 53 years old. Your time now is 628. It is 75 degrees outside. We should let you know that a significant weather advisory now does include San Antonio and Bear County. We'll check in with Mike and get an update. Via taking more precautions after another bus driver tested positive for COVID-19. We'll get the latest from Alicia Pereira. A house fire here on the east side fans the flames of fear. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you how firefighters put it all out. Another VIA bus driver has tested positive for COVID-19. Just ahead on GMSA, the last day they reported for duty and the bus routes they handled. And outside with live cam, calm before the storm. Mike's been tracking some showers and thunderstorms all morning long. The question has been, will they make it into San Antonio proper? Looks like the chances may have gone up just a little bit. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is April 29th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. So what's happening with that? We'll get to that in just a minute. Anything affecting the roadways right now? Not yet. Uh -oh, wait to see we'll what the rain wait. moves in. <laughs> yeah, because it is uh, working its way down here, even though things have you know, settle down from what it was earlier this morning. We still have some pretty good uh, thunderstorms that are moving down in through the area and that uh, some significant weather advisory has been expanded. So we've got uh, just really humid conditions when you step outside as of right now. That will be changing though. Here's the latest on radar and what you can, you know, first of all, take away from the big picture is the tail end of this, the western end of this is definitely weakening. Obviously, there's still a lot of lightning, heavy downpours, very strong winds. If you have not heard as this moved through uh, Bergstrom Airport up in Austin, 54 mile per hour winds were recorded and this will continue to work its way down to the south. The significant weather advisory it has now been expanded to include portions of Kerr County, Bandera, Medina County, obviously San Antonio and as well as Wilson County and off to the east. So we're going to be seeing high winds with this, maybe some pea sized hail that uh, hail has been reported. Nothing uh, to reach severe levels, however, but it's going to be up there. So we're looking at winds in excess of 40, maybe 45 miles per hour with some of these thunderstorms as well as those hefty downpours. And this will continue. And by the way, that significant weather advisory is in effect up until 715 this morning. And as you can see, most of the really, really intense cells have kind of broken up. They are weakening, but we've got a very strong cell moving through Gonzales as of right now. San Marcos, you're getting hit hard. New Braunfels, Canyon Lake, and this continues to move down to the south. So just get ready. If you have to leave, why don't you do it now and get to where you're going instead of waiting because that will move on through here. As far as the severe thunderstorm watch, that's still in effect up until 9 o'clock, and that does include Hayes and Gonzales counties. No other uh, watches or warnings are in effect. As a matter of fact, there haven't been any reports of any uh, severe weather as far as hail bigger than one inch or winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. Haven't had any reports of that by the Weather Service in at least about an hour and a half to two hours. Temperatures mid 70s right now. Molds on the high side that's going to be dropping down tomorrow, but probably not today. And as far as temperatures, we are going to see them drop down as this front moves through. And also the humidity is going to be dropping down. It's going to be very pleasant later on today. Sunny skies, very windy, however, all day long. Cool morning sunshine the next couple of days. Heat and humidity returns for the weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. So like you said, Marcus, nothing yet, but Nothing yet, but Mike, uh, once that rolls in, there's no telling what's going to happen on the roadways. Now, I, I guess on the, the other hand, the good news is that the traffic volume isn't what it normally is due to this uh, stay home, work safe. So hopefully that'll also play a factor in uh, what we see on the roadways. Right now, let's take a look outside through Transguide. You can see that I-10 and Callahan east west westbound lane so far, no problems there. And traffic is picking up also I-10 and Frio, both on the inbound and the outbound lanes. Mark and Leslie. Yes. Firefighters say there were no working utilities, but lots of flames inside an east side home. For that reason, they've called in arson investigators to look for the cause of the fire. It broke out early this morning in the 100 block of F Street. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. So how bad was the damage, Katrina? Well, firefighters tell us that that home and everything inside was destroyed by the fire. It's a tiny house that's behind this main house right across the street. And you can get a better look at things uh, in the video. 
Firefighters were called out here around 345 this morning. They say they found that tiny house in flames. Now, there were some people here who told them that their father was inside that house. Firefighters were racing, trying to get to him. The family, very upset, had to be calmed by police. But in the middle of all of this, the man who they thought was inside actually walked up. He was fine. He had gone out unbeknownst to his family. So there were no injuries, but again, lots of damage to his home. Firefighters did call in the arson investigators because they say there were no working utilities to that home. So they're not exactly sure how the fire started. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. New information from VIA this morning. They've confirmed to KSAT 12 another bus driver has tested positive for COVID-19. This brings their total number to seven drivers and one administrative employee who have tested positive for the virus. Alicia Beretta live with more information, including the last day the latest bus driver affected reported for duty and what routes they drove on. Good morning. Well, let's start with the good news of the total of eight VIA employees that have tested positive for COVID-19. Two of those bus operators and the administrative employee have made a full recovery and they've actually been cleared to be back at work. So that's the good news. But unfortunately, just yesterday, that seventh bus operator did report positive test results for COVID-19. And here's what we know so far about that bus operator. Those results again came yesterday, Friday, April 24th, according to VIA, was the last day the operator reported for duty. And on your screen, you should be able to see the routes this bus operator handled up to 10 days prior to reporting those first symptoms. In those 10 days, it shows the employee operated 14 buses throughout the city. And according to VIA, those buses have been sanitized daily and have undergone the enhanced cleaning. VIA says they are in the process of contact tracing with coworkers and other people the bus operator may have been in close contact with. VIA says once they were notified that Friday of the symptoms, they followed VIA's contagious virus protocol for employees, which is designed to, of course, limit the exposure to others. And that bus operator was referred, referred to the city county pre-approved testing site for frontline workers as well as uh, first responders. And if you're a VIA customer, earlier we talked about that number to call. I have that here for you. It's the, the VIA customer care team. That's who you want to call. That's 210-362-2020. And VIA tells us in total three bus operators right now are at home recovering. The remaining two are being treated at a local hospital for COVID-19. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Today, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson will face Parliament for the first time since having contracted COVID-19 and recovering. The Prime Minister tested positive March 27th and was hospitalized in early April, going into intensive care. Johnson has since made a full recovery and returned to duty Monday. And on a positive note this morning, the Prime Minister's fiance, Carrie Simons, gave birth to a baby boy. Just about 6.40 now on Friday, Texas will encounter its first phase of reopening amid the coronavirus pandemic. That means as businesses begin to reopen, many want to hire you. Comet Cleaners is looking to hire several dry cleaning associates uh, and customer service associates and pressers. Some qualifications for this job are a high school diploma or GED and a commitment to customer service. You must be able to work the night shift. T-Mobile needs a retail sales mobile associate. You must have a high school diploma or GED and have at least six months of customer service or retail experience. CPS Energy is looking to hire a data engineer. Some qualifications include a bachelor's degree in a related field and relevant certifications. For more information on these jobs and many others, go to workintexas.com. 640, 76 degrees. We often see toys marketed to boys and some to girls, but buying gender-specific toys could cause more harm than good. We'll have info from a new study after the break. Dolls for girls and trucks for boys. It's no secret that many toy makers and parents encourage gendered play. But a new study suggests children may actually learn more when they play with STEM toys designed for the opposite sex. Developmental psychologists studied five-year-olds and their moms by examining their reactions to an engineering toy that was branded in two ways, for boys and for girls.
Results revealed the children showed no preference for the toy branded for their own gender. When left alone, the children played in a manner consistent with their gender stereotype. Yet the girls actually learned more about engineering from the toy for boys, while boys learned more from the toy for girls. But the packaging did influence how moms responded with their kids. They engaged in more building when playing with the boy toy and more reading when playing with the girl toy. The researchers found that despite their actions during play, the moms were overall more interested in neutral toys rather than gender-specific toys for their kids. They say this raises questions, though, how young children gravitate towards certain toys. Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News. It's exactly 645. And it is time to check on the roadways once again. Marcus, what's happening? Well, we have a stalled vehicle. That stalled vehicle is going to be on the southbound lanes of 37. Uh, right there at the Hackberry exit, as you can see, we do have officers out there slowing traffic just a little bit. Remember, when you do see those flashing lights, you must slow down 20 miles an hour below the speed limit or vacate to the next available lane if there is an available lane. If not, you're simply going to have to slow down. Right now, 35 at 410 up on the northeast side, starting to get a little bit busier up there, and you can see I-10 at the Y, no issues. That's the infamous fine silver curve. 410 at Austin Highway looking great with no problems there. 410 at Starcrest. So, we go out here to I-10 and Callahan, eastbound and westbound lanes. So far, no issues there. Everybody's sitting on pins and needles waiting to see what's going to happen. Waiting for the rest on of the, the rain. We are too. What's your confidence level about these storms making it to San Antonio now, Mike? Now it has... Seriously, just by looking at radar, drop down a little bit. You know, sometimes you, you go by computer. It's really all over the place today. And, and just looking at them, and you got to go with your gut, and, you know, kind of looking out the window going, okay, here are these things coming, and they are starting to definitely weaken more so. We will still see a little bit of rain, but, yeah, most of it's going to be uh, further to the east. Now, that doesn't mean you won't see a little bit of rain here in town, but, I mean, just look at what radar is doing right now. This all continues to, to work its way down to the uh, southeast. Gonzales, you still got some uh, fairly hefty uh, storms right there. San Marcos is getting pounded, uh, as well as New Braunfels and northern uh, kind of right around Canyon Lake, but notice how all this is starting to drift even more off to the east. We will obviously see some rain in in San Antonio. There's that one little uh, spot that's heading in toward Bernie as of right now. But the uh, the heaviest storms, and this is going to continue to work its way down to the south. So Seguin, you want to watch out for uh, some of that as well. And again, that's a significant weather advisory. And just to kind of put a little outline on it, it does include parts of the hill country, but obviously there's no rain over here in Medina, in Bandera at all. Uh, San Antonio, there is the possibility to see some of this uh, rain and a couple of heavier thunderstorms. Winds are going to be one of the, the bigger issues with this. I haven't seen any reports of any pea-sized hail uh, as of recent, but don't be surprised if maybe there is a little bit in some of these stronger cells there around San Marcos as well as uh, Gonzales and further down to the uh, the southeast. And once again, New Braunfels, you're starting to see some of this rain. It's heading in toward Seguin, Canyon Lake, some pretty good thunderstorms. But all of a sudden, I mean, these things look like they're they're taking a kind of a a right hand turn, if you will, heading more down to the uh, southeast. Computer models have been handling this fairly well. Most of this rain stays well off to the east of us, of San Antonio, pardon me, and we'll just have a few uh, showers in behind it. Some leftover clouds this morning, and then we will clear out very nicely later on this afternoon. Still got that severe thunderstorm uh, watch in effect for Gonzales and Hayes County up until 9 o'clock. By the way, that significant weather advisory is until 715. There is some fog around Hondo, Pleasanton, a little bit of it, New Braunfels, and then further off to the east. Temperatures are very, very warm still. A ton of humidity out there. Now, winds have started to shift out of the uh, north to northeast. 16 at San Antonio, 21 New Braunfels, Kerrville, and then some of these wind gusts are just off the charts, and this is not even associated with the thunderstorms. When the storm went through Austin earlier this morning, about 54 mile per hour wind gusts, but this is just associated with this uh, front moving on through here, and that's what we can expect throughout the day is the extremely windy conditions and drier air is going to just pour on in here. Dew points will really drop down, so it's going to be uh, an absolutely beautiful day today as well as tomorrow. Then the humidity is definitely going to make a return once we get in here toward the uh, the weekend. So temperatures, as soon as this front moves on through, will be dropping down somewhat and then rebounding up to the uh, upper 70s today at noon. Northeasterly wind, 15, 25 miles per hour, gusting on top of that, and then 85 for a high temperature today 
plenty of sunshine, dry air, but it is going to be windy today. And then tomorrow, nice and uh, nice, pleasant morning, mid 50s, actually below normal. Same thing Friday morning up to the mid to uh, upper 80s. And then the heat and humidity returns for the weekend. Looks like it's going to stay fairly hot going into next week as well. So pretty much call it 281 East. We're going to see some of these thunderstorms, some heavier downpours, a little bit of it uh, here in town as well. Mike will keep us updated during Good Morning America, and then yep. Justin steps in to update us at 9. Correct, and he's here looking at it already. All right, thank you, Mike. Just about 10 till right now, 76 degrees. Moms are often trying to find ways to raise upstanding members of society. That's two, and that can be stressful. Join us tomorrow for GMSA, where we look at a new study that shows how playing with your young child might foster better behavior. Outside with live cams, the sun is coming up over South Texas. Texas waiting on those storms. Some of you are getting hammered right now. We're going to get the news you need to know before you go and another look at time saver traffic still to come. Coming up here on GMA on a Wednesday morning, the very latest as the number of confirmed cases in the United States of coronavirus tops 1 million, the death toll nearing 60,000. We here at ABC News are learning that these numbers might even be a little low. The numbers of deaths could even be double. We'll talk about it right here on GMA. San Antonio firefighters find themselves fighting flames and fear at an east side home. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. A family feared the worst about their loved one, thinking that person was still inside a burning home. The firefighters got here around 345. This is the 100 block of F Street. They also believe the man was inside. They moved in right away to put out the flames and search for him. They also had to call in police to help calm that man's family. Well, in the middle of the commotion, though, the man walked up. He wasn't home after all. There were no injuries, but his house and everything inside it was heavily damaged. Arson investigators are trying to figure out how that fire started. According to firefighters, there were no working utilities inside the home. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We are approaching five minutes till seven. Time to check the roadways once again. Marcus? Well, right now we're looking at this uh, stalled vehicle, but the good news is tow truck there on the scene. So that is uh, being hooked up right now. They're going to load it up on that flatbed and get that out of the way and open up all lanes for travel once again. Now in the downtown vicinity, 35, 37, the interchange there, you can see traffic moving through uh, that intersection with no problem at all. And up there at the airport, 281 at the airport, uh, 410, you can see those connector ramps, no problem. And then down below, eastbound and westbound lanes of 410 still running smoothly. So what's the latest, Mike? Well, roads are dry right now in and around San Antonio proper. It is warm and humid out there. I mean, you can just about cut the, the humidity with a knife. And this is what it looks like on radar right now. Some uh, very hefty storms are moving through New Braunfels, uh, as well as San Marcos, Canyon Lake. But notice how everything now all of a sudden looks like it's kind of getting a, somewhat of an eastward movement to it. Uh, we will be grazed here in Bear County by some of this rain, but it what had looked like it was going to be making almost a direct uh, hit on Bear County. Now looks like it's just going to be sort of a, a glancing blow. Obviously a lot of rain well off to the east. I uh, expect some very high winds with these storms as they move through, as well as the front moving through. We're at 77 degrees right now, 67 though in Canyon Lake. So temperatures as this front and winds are very blustery. They're gusting about 25, 30, 35 miles per hour. Uh, temperatures will drop down this morning, come back up to about 78 at noon, 85. Dry air, really pleasant, but very windy all day long. And then the next couple of days look fantastic. Should I leave it there or go into the weekend? Hot weekend. humid this weekend. Hot, hot. Yeah. Okay. You're going up 35, Run. you're going to run into some rain. Going out 10, you're going to run into rain. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Good Morning America's next. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.